Now we will discuss the models of learning styles. The first model that we are going to discuss is known as Scott's learning style model. It proposes four distinct learning styles. In fact, it proposes a cycle of learning styles and that cycle has four stages. Learning styles which has been proposed by Kolb is or this model is a style or learning style model which is viewed on a continuum of two types or two dimensions. They are perceiving and processing. Now the perceiving dimension reflects concrete versus abstract learning style and process information demonstrate active versus reflective learning style. I'm now going to explain with the help of image the continuum which has been proposed by Kolb's model of learning style. To begin with, if you look at this continuum, you will see that you have perception continuum here and processes or processing continuum here. You have diverging, which means feeling and watching, assimilating, which means thinking and watching. Then you have converging, that is thinking and doing. And then you have accommodating, which means feeling and doing. So perception continuum has the concrete experiences based on feelings and abstract conceptualization based on thinking. Now processing continuum has effective experimentation that is doing and reflective observation that is watching. So feeling, thinking, watching and doing. Now these are the four distinctive stages of learning styles as proposed by Cobbs. Now let's see what we have here. First of all diverging which means feeling and watching. Now this particular stage demonstrates generating of ideas and open to experience, seeking background information, sensing opportunities, investigating new patterns, recognizing problems and liking or like to have brainstorming. Now, diverging, which is concrete reflective, basically emphasizes the innovative and imaginative approach. It views concrete situation from many perspectives and adopts by observation rather than by doing action. So here you see that a lot of observation is being done and no doing. Now, at this stage, people are interested or interested and tend to be feeling oriented. And like such activities as cooperative group, as we can see from brainstorming. Then we have assimilating, which is basically a reflective observation as well. Here you see think and watch. It defines problems and develop theory, creates models, compare alternatives, establishes criteria, formulate plans and hypotheses, and basically inductive. Now, this particular stage pulls number of different observations and thoughts into an integrated whole, likes to reason inductively and create models and theories here. As we can see, creation of models and creation of theories. And also likes to design projects to experiment or for the practical uh, purposes. Now on this side, you can see you have converging, which is doing. Now it says selects among alternatives in order to perform, focuses efforts, evaluates plans and programs, test, this is doing, testing hypothesis, make a decision, practical and deductive and problem solving. Now at this stage of the um, cycle, you see that Converging emphasizes the practical application of ideas and solving problems and it prefers decision making, problem solving and practical applications and also technical problems over interpersonal issues. These are all technical. It has nothing to do with interpersonal issues. Now moving to accommodating, you see that it's feeling and doing advocates positions and ideas, interested in results, 
It sets objectives, commits to schedules and resources, implements decisions and is pretty adaptable. Accommodating basically prefers trial and error rather than thought and reflection. It is good at adapting to change circumstances, solve problem and also tend to be at ease with people. So people who can relate to situations and then do they it, it provides level of comfort to the people. So this is called learning style model, having divergence or diverging, assimilating, converging and accommodating. Now we have the Felter Silverman model. It has been proposed by Richard Felder and Linda Silverman for two reasons. Number one is to determine the learning style differences among the engineering students. And also to provide basis to the teachers uh, based on those differences to design relevant and appropriate lessons to cater to the needs of the learners. Later on, it's been seen as not being restricted to the engineering students. And based because it refers to the notion that students have preferences in terms of the way they perceive and process information. So it's not just the engineering students who need to have this distinctive uh, learning styles. All students, they vary in terms of their preferences uh, in order to process the information or in terms of receiving the information. So that's why this model is, has been generalized for all types of students. I'm going to explain this model with the help of the image. This is the Felder-Silverman model of learning styles. And it has one, two, three, four stages, four boxes. Now, the first is about the active or reflective. You have active versus reflective learners. Active learners learn by direct interaction with the material and they prefer group communication. Whereas reflective learners like to think about the material and prefer individual or very small group communication. So basically you can see that active learners are more uh, enthusiastic in having group communication and they can have the direct interaction with the material. But over here, the reflective are the ones who think about it and they prefer small group communication or rather work on individual basis. The second is sensing or intuitive. Sensing learners are detail-oriented and practical. They are detail-oriented and practical with preferences for concrete facts and real-world applications. So they go for the concrete information. Intuitive learners have creative disposition and are drawn to the theoretical and abstract. So they are basically also the thinking learners and they like to observe and ponder and deliberate on the theoretical and more abstract uh, way of uh, developing their learning. Whereas sensing learners are detail oriented and pretty practical. The third is visual learners who are better able to remember images. They have seen, for example, charts, graphs and pictures. So they prefer images. And then you have verbal learners who are better able to remember written or spoken words. So basically, their preference is written as well as spoken words, more spoken. Emphasis is on the spoken more. And visual are the ones who prefer images and charts and graphs. Then you have sequential or global. Sequential learners prefer learning linearly with logical steps. So stepwise. Stepwise learning is encouraged here. Global learners prefer a holistic approach and seems more general, more a wide approach and seem to learn almost randomly. So there is no stepwise learning process. So they learn almost randomly by fitting pieces together into big picture. So it is more holistic and it is more logical and stepwise learning that is taken care by sequential learners. Third is called the format system. 
This model has been developed by Bernus McCarthy in 1972 with four major learning styles. Now, in this particular model, the strengths of each style has been highlighted. It refers to the notion that almost all people must engage in modes of learning, styles of learning, but then there are possibility and there are chances that people tend to prefer one style over the other. The format model is again constructed along two continuums, that is perceiving the information and processing the information. Now I'm going to explain the format system model with the help of the image. Now type 1 learners are called feeling and reflecting learners because they learn by seeking meaning and are more interested in the question why. They like to have learning connected to real life problems and they like to generate a question that why do I need to learn this. So the question why is there is why is something which is their strength. Type 2 learners which demonstrate what are basically reflecting and thinking learners. They learn by thinking through ideas and are most interested in the question what, which means that they prefer logical abstract thinking and they want to work with facts and ideas. They prefer to learn by thinking through ideas and they would ask the question such as what do I need to learn? Third, as we can see, question having how. Now, this type of learners are called thinking and doing learners. They learn by testing theories and are most interested in the question how. They like hands-on experience, especially when learning something new and really want to use what they learn to apply to new situations. The question they ask is, how do I use the information? The fourth type is if. Now, this type of learners are dynamic learners that they create and then they act. They learn by trial and error or seeking hidden possibilities and are most interested in the question what if or so what. Uh, they perceive information concretely and process it actively. They want actions. They want to see, hear, touch and feel and they uh, like to raise questions. What if? They need to answer the question if. To conclude, Cobb's learning styles and format model are based on perceiving and processing information with different continuums. And Felder's Silverman learning model analyzes preferences in terms of receiving and processing information.